my name is Sheila Kanani. I'm the Education Outreach and Diversity Officer at the Royal Astronomical Society and here we are for another lockdown learning session. Today I would like to introduce Cassandra Y, who's going to be leading the session and telling you stories all about eclipses. So over to you. Thank you. Hello everybody. My name is Cassandra and I am a storyteller with the We Share the Same Moon.org project. And today's session is about eclipses. And we're going to start as we always do with a story. Now, this story comes all the way. It comes all the way. It comes all the way from a very special country, which I have been to, the country called Korea. And this is a legend from Korea. Now, when I tell stories, it's up to you. You can join in with the actions, you can join in with the words, uh, or you can just listen. It's up to you. Uh, it's an interactive session if you want to be interactive, or you can just listen. It's up to you. So, but this is a story that starts long ago. Long ago. That's right, you can join in if you want to. Long ago. Who can do that? Long ago. Fantastic. Who can try that at home? Long ago. When the world began, there was the blue and green earth spinning in the sky. But, 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 was it the only planet in the sky? What do you think? No. No, 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 no. According to Car Korean legend, there were lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of planets, all of them spinning in the sky. Can you be a spinning planet? Good spinning, Eleanor. Good spinning, Purdy. There were not just one planet or two planets or three or four or five or six or seven or eight or nine or ten. There were hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of them spinning in the sky. And our planet was just one of them, but, but, but it was a special planet because the planet Earth had light. It had the sun to, that rose in the daytime, ding, to provide light in the day. And of course, it had the moon to provide light at night, ding. And so the planet Earth was surrounded by light, both day and night. Whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. And the planet Earth was known, according to this story, as the planet of light. And everyone else living on all the other planets was jealous of this single planet that had so much light. And, and, and. There were lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of planets spinning in the sky. And one of them so far away from the Earth, a long, 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 long way away. A long, 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 long way away. Well, this planet had no light at all. It was known as the planet of darkness, for it did not have a sun, no, 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 and it did did not have a moon. No, 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 no. It had no light at all. Well, can you imagine what it was like for the animals living there? There was the deer. One day the deer went out looking for food in the darkness and he looked and looked and looked and the deer was hopping along and hopping along and hopping along. Who could be the deer with me? Can you be the deer? Hopping along and hopping along and hopping along. And there was a rock in the deer's way. Could the deer see the rock? What do you think? No, it was too dark. There was no light to see it. And the deer's poor nose hit the rock. Ping! Can you try this at home? Ping! Ooh! Said the deer. Can you try that? Ooh! Said the deer. Oh! Enough! 
is enough, said the deer. We need some light. Enough is enough. We need some light. Enough is enough, said the deer. We need some light. And the animals started to join in. Can you help them? Enough is enough. We need some light. Enough is enough. We need some light. Enough is enough. We need some light. Oh. The next day, into that darkness, went the tiger looking for some water to drink. And the tiger was walking along and walking along and walking along. Who can walk like a tiger? The tiger was walking along and walking along and walking along. The tiger was walking along and walking along and walking along. And there was a tree in the tiger's way. Now, what do you think? Could you see the tree? Do you think, he, who thinks he can see the tree? No, it was too dark. And the poor tiger's nose hit the tree. Bang! Ooh! Said the tiger. Can you try that at home? Ooh! Said the tiger. Oh, enough is enough. We need some light. 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 The third day, the golden eagle was flying over the mountains of Korea. Flap, 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 flap. She was flying along. Flap, 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 flap. Can you lift your wings like a golden eagle? Flap, flap, flap. Flap, they have enormous wings. Flap, 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 flap. And as she flew over the mountains, there was one great big enormous mountain that was in her way. Did she see the mountain? What do you think? No. Her nose hit the mountain. Ping. Can you try this at home? Ping. And what did the eagles say? Oh. Can you try that? Ooh. Enough is enough. We need some light. 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 Well, as you can imagine, there was the deer, there was the tiger, there was the eagle, and they all got together. And their voices were joined by all the other animals on the planet of darkness, and by all the people too. Can you help them? How loud can you be? Enough is enough. We need some light. Enough is enough. We need some light. Enough is enough. We need some light. And they all gathered together, chanting in front of the palace where the king of the planet of darkness lived. Hum, hum, hum. And the king opened the doors to his palace. Dum. And the people came in and all of them were chanting, enough is enough. We need some light. Enough is enough. We need some light. Enough is... And the king raised his hand. Enough. I have listened, and I will do as you ask. Oh, 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 thank you. Thank you, King. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And the people all, and the animals all bowed down and they watched. Now the King had a telescope, and he had looked out over the planet of darkness, and he had seen that in the distance, <laughs> Far, far away, he'd seen this blue and green planet that was surrounded by light, day and night. And the king of the planet of darkness looked out at the earth that was surrounded in all of this light. And the king thought, hmm, 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 enough is enough. They should share their light. Don't you think that's a good idea? Hmm. And all the people said, oh, yes, 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 king. They should share their light with us. They have so much and we have nothing. Right, said the king. And because I am a king, I will not ask. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. I will take. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, 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 yes. And so the king thought of a plan to steal some light from the planet of light, our home. Now the king had, beside his throne, a giant dog 
Oh, 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 oh! And this giant dog was so huge, his feet were the size of dinner plates. They weren't just big, they weren't just huge, they were enormous. <laughs> and the dog's mouth was so big that he could swallow a cake in one gulp. <laughs> And this giant dog would do anything, anything, anything that the king would ask. And so the king looked at his dog and he said, he, the king pointed to the moon. The king pointed to the earth and the moon and the sun. And the king pointed to the sun and said to his dog, fetch me the sun. And the dog, oh, 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 it's master. And he set off to fetch the sun and bring it back to provide light to his king and his people. And the dog galloped across the dark and starry sky. Get him, 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 get him. Can you try a bit of galloping at home? Get him, 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 get him. He galloped his feet slapping against the the stars of the sky. Get him, 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 get him. And it was a long, long way for him to go all the way from the planet of darkness towards our earth and our sun. Get him, get him, get him, get him, get him, get him. And of course, even though he was a huge dog and a brave dog, he grew tired. Get him, get him, get him, get him, get him, get him. Can you try? Get him, get him, get him, get him, get him, get him. He, but he carried on, get him, get him, get him, get him, get him, get him. And of course, as he got closer and closer and closer to the sun, well, it grew, do you think it grew hotter or colder? Who thinks it grew, it grew, grows hotter? Yes, you're right. As he got closer and closer to the sun, it grew hotter. Get him, get him, get him, get him, get him, get him. Get him, get him, get him, get him, get him, get him. The poor dog, he was hot, he was tired, but he carried on. Get him, 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 get him. And he got closer and closer and closer until he reached the sun and he opened his giant mouth. Can you open your giant mouth and take a great big gulp of the sun? He took a great big gulp. Ouch! Oh, ouch, oh, ouch, oh, ouch, oh, ouch, ouch. Can you say me how hot the sun is? Oh, ouch, oh, ouch, oh, ouch, oh, ouch, ouch, The sun was so hot it burnt his mouth. But, 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 did he give up? No. He knew, that's right, mm -mm. he had to do what his master asked. So he took hold of the sun. Ooh, and he started to drag it back <laughs> across the sky. Mm. Now, of course, down on earth, down on earth in Korea, the people looked up. And what did they see? They saw the sky grow dark and the sun start to disappear from view. <gasps> Somebody is stealing our sun. Somebody is stealing our sun. Quick. They ran indoors. They weren't frightened. They were furious. And they came up with a plan. They ran indoors. They grabbed hold of their pots and pans and they grabbed hold of their spoons and they started to drum. Ping, 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 ping. Ping, 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 ping. Ping, 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 ping. Ping, 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 ping. Can you try this? Oh. Ping, 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 ping. Ping, 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 ping. Ping, 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 ping. Ping, 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 ping. Ping, <laughs> Even louder than that, you need to reach the sky. Ping, 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 ping. <gasps> oh, and up in the sky, fantastic, everybody, good drumming. Ping, 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 ping. The sound went up and up and up and up and up and up into the sky <gasps> and reached the ears of that dog. Oh. Imagine, he's come all that way, his paws hurt, the sun has burnt his mouth, his mouth's hurt, and now the drumming is so loud it's hurting his ears. Ooh. That poor dog, his paws hurt, his mouth hurt, his ears hurt. Ooh. He tried to drag the sun, <coughs> but it was just too difficult. And so, and so, 
And so he gave up and turned around and galloped back home. Can you help him gallop back home? Get it 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 It was a long way. Get it get it get it get it get it get it He was tired. Get him get him get him get him get him get him But he got all the way back to the planet of darkness where the king was waiting. Hum 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 and the king looked at his dog. Oh, 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 oh. The dog spoke to him. Oh, 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 oh. Sorry, said the dog. Sun was too hot. I couldn't bring it. Very sorry. Oh. And the king looked at his dog. Hmm. 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 And he was furious. Hmm. 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 What? 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 Too hot? Too hot? Too hot? You have disobeyed me. Bad dog. And the king looked at his dog and said, You must try again. And this time the king pointed to the moon and said, Fetch me the moon. His dog was tired, but of course he did what the king asked. He set off across the starry sky. Can you help him? Get him, 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 get him. It was a long, long way, and he grew tired. Get him, get him, get him, get him, get him, get him. And of course, as he got to the moon, did it go hotter or colder? What do you think? He thinks it grows colder. It grows colder, that's right. Get him, get him, get him. Get him, get him, get him. Get him, get him, get him. Oh, oh. Shivering with cold, the dog, he galloped as fast as he could towards the moon. He got towards the moon and he took a great big bite. <laughs> Ouch! The moon was so cold, it was burnt his tongue and his mouth. It made blisters like the sun. Ouch, said the dog. Oh, ouch, oh. But he knew that his king was relying on him and he didn't want to let him down again. So he took another bite and started to drag the moon across the, side, across the sky. And the moon slowly, on earth, the people of Korea looked up and this time they saw the moon begin to disappear. <gasps> and then they saw out from the dog's mouth where there were blisters, blood began to pour down the moon's face. <gasps> the, the, the moon began to turn dark and then it turned red and covered with blood. <gasps> Said the people of Korea, somebody is stealing our moon. What's going on? Were they afraid? No. The people of Korea, they knew what to do. They ran indoors. Can you grab your pots and pans? Are you ready? And paint the paint, paint, paint. 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 And the noise went up and up and up and up and up into the sky and reached the ears of that poor dog. Imagine. His paws hurt, his mouth hurt, his ears hurt. It was all too much. He let go of the moon. And he turned and galloped all the way back home. Get him, 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 get him. And it was a long, long way and he was tired. Get him, get him, get him, get him, get him, get him. He arrived back at the planet of darkness. He went into the palace and there sat the king. Hum, hum, hum. And the king looked to the dog and said, where is the moon? Oh, 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 said the dog, very sorry. It was too cold. I could not bring it to you. And the king looked to the dog. Too cold, too cold, too cold. 
you disobeyed me again. <gasps> Very bad dog. Hmm. And the king said, try again. And so, and so, and so, that poor dog keeps going backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards from the planet of darkness to the earth and the earth's moon and sun, trying to steal them to bring light back for everyone at home. But does he manage it? No. But the Korean people say that is why sometimes the sun and the moon disappear from the sky. Or at least that's what I was told. And that is the end of the story. Give yourselves a huge round of applause at home. Now, let's think a little bit. So that's a story about Korea. Now let's think, do you think the sun and the moon sometimes disappears from the sky because because um, a dog tries to steal them? What do you think? Why do you think they try and disappear from the sky? Can you write down in the chat room, why do you think they try and disappear from the sky? Why do you think it is? What makes the sun and moon disappear from the sky? Is it because a dog tries to steal them? What do you think? If you write down in the chat room, what do you think? Why does the sun and moon try and disappear from the sky? Make some knows that it's not to do with animals eating. <laughs> <laughs> so why do you think it's to do? Well, I'll tell you, it's because of what we call eclipses. Now eclipses happen, sometimes it looks as if the sun or the moon is disappearing from the sky. I'm going to explain it and then we're going to see a video so that you can see it at home because it's quite difficult to explain. So it's about the relationship and Sheena, if I get it wrong, you can correct me. It's about the relationship between the sun and the moon and the earth because they don't stay still in the sky. The moon, goes round, the, the moon goes round the earth, it orbits the earth, and the earth goes round the sun, it orbits the sun. Now sometimes, it's like a dance really, sometimes the moon, um, so here's the sun, and this is the earth, and the sun provides light on the earth, and the earth is lit up by the sun. Now sometimes the moon comes between the sun and the earth, and the, the moon casts a shadow on the earth. And if you're standing in that shadow, it looks as if the sun disappears from the sky. It's what we call a solar eclipse. Now, of course, on the other hand, if you have the moon at night, the moon is also lit by the sun. The moon doesn't make light itself, it's lit by the sun. I didn't know this, but it's true. So the sun lights up the moon, that's why we can see it. But if the earth gets in between the sun and the moon, it blocks that light and the earth casts a shadow over the moon and it, the moon disappears from view, what we call a lunar eclipse. Now let's see, I'm going to try and show you this with a couple of models so you can try this at home. So this light here, can you see that? that can you see that, Sheila? Can you see that light? Mm -hmm. That's my sun and here's my earth. Let's put it on Africa for, for those of us from Senegal. So can you see the moon, the earth at home? It's being lit by that sun. You can try this at home with a torch or a lamp like me and any kind of a globe, not necessarily an earth globe. So you can see the lights on Africa and the rest of the earth's in shadow. So it would be daytime in Africa and the rest of the other side of the earth is nighttime. So in Africa, so here comes the moon and it's gonna come in between. Now, can you see that at home? The earth, the, 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 the moon casts a shadow on the earth. Let's try it this way. The moon casts a shadow on the earth. And if you were standing in the middle of Africa in Nigeria, it would look as if the sun had disappeared from view. And it's really eerie when you see a solar eclipse. You can see the shadow coming across the ground towards you. It looks like something out of a ghost movie. And the, the, the shadow crawls towards you and all the ground grows dark. And then the sky grows dark too. So that's a lunar eclipse where the moon comes between the sun Solar and eclipse. Uh, solar eclipse. Thank you. I knew I got it wrong. Where the moon comes between the earth and the sun and casts a shadow on the earth. Now the other way around, so here is the sun and here is our moon. So the earth's gonna come between it. Let's see if you can see the shadow at home. So if the earth comes between the, the sun and the moon, it casts a shadow. Let's try it this way. 
now. It's easier to do at home because I've got to have a light on for the cameras. If you turn all the lights off and you do this with a torch or a table lamp and two different balls to represent the, the two different globes, two different balls to represent the moon and the earth, you can see the shadows. Have a try at home. But, but, but we've also got a couple of videos to show you. Sheila, can you show us the first one, please? I can. I will just say with the, um, with the eclipses, we're really lucky on the earth because the relative sizes of the sun and the moon and the distances between them give us these perfect eclipses. We wouldn't have them if the moon was slightly smaller or slightly bigger or um, the sun was slightly further away or slightly closer. So we're very, very lucky that we get them. On other places, on other planets, there are eclipses, but they're not as perfect as ours. So there we go. We are very lucky. Right. Let's it's because it. although I've got my models, they aren't actually to scale, are they, Sheila? So well, the, no, it would be hard to get them to scale. <laughs> so the, the moon is much, much, much smaller than the Earth. And of course, the, the Earth is much, much, much smaller than the sun. Okay, could you go to the next slide, please, to the video of the solar eclipse? So that's our website. All these resources are on the website, so you can look at them again. So if you could start the video, please. So this is a simulation of what happened in 2009 in Bangladesh. If you could just speed it up to about 18 seconds, Sheila, that would be great. Where's my cursor gone there? So this is the sky at night over Bangladesh. Now you can see the sun beginning to rise. As it does at home every day. Maybe you can go outside and look at how the sun rises and how it changes the light. Here comes the sun. Now watch seeing the moon because the moon is so much smaller than the, the, the sun it looks like a tiny dot on your computer it looks like a piece of dirt can you see it it's just coming that's so the moon is now starting to cross in front of the sun so can you see the sky getting darker and the the ground is is is, is completely in shadow there's a shadow of the, the the moon is cast on the earth's surface we go and then the moon starts to move away so because the moon is very small a solar eclipse only lasts for a couple of minutes i think the last one we had in that we could see and you have to be in that moon shadow in that shadow to see it oh there it is there's the eclipse and when the moon is in front of the sun all you can see is like a crown of the sun and there it is. There you see. So the moon is almost directly in front of the sun. And even though the moon is really, really small, it blocks a lot of the sun from view. And that, all you can see is those rays, which is called a corona, which is a word you might know of. The coronavirus is called because it looks like a crown. It looks like what we can see in the solar eclipse. So there is the moon in front of the sun. And now it's going to start moving away. and the sky will start to lighten up again. So a solar eclipse happens when the moon crosses in front of the sun, you see a shadow appearing on the ground. If you're in, if you're in the right place, you will see the shadow. All the ground will go dark, the sky will go dark, it'll be like nighttime. The birds will stop singing and sometimes you'll even hear dogs howling because they're scared, it's a very eerie thing. Can you imagine what it'd be like for people hundreds of thousands of years ago where they didn't know what caused it? That's why they come up with stories like that the dog's stealing the sun. On our website, we have lots of different stories about the eclipse. Oh, now let's have a look at the lunar eclipse. So, Sheila, Sheila, could you start this video about two minutes in? Now, because the Earth is so much bigger than the moon, the lunar eclipse, there we go, lasts for a lot longer. So we're just going to show you a little bit of it. And you'll see that the sky, can you see at home, the sky is turning red. As the Earth passes, uh, passes in front of the moon, the moon sometimes turns red. Sheila, can you tell us why the moon turns red? Yeah, so it's, um, it's to do with the fact that because the Earth is in between the moon and the sun, and the sun's rays are travelling, that some of them are being blocked by the Earth and there's the shadow on the moon, but some of the rays are travelling through the Earth's atmosphere and um, what you can see is when they travel through the Earth's atmosphere, we normally, we can see sunsets, can't we? We can see these kind of red colored sunsets. 
and the same, exactly the same process is happening, but the, the red colour is imposed on the, um, on the surface of the moon, and that's why the moon looks red during a, a lunar eclipse. And there's, and again, if you can imagine, thank you very much, Sheila. Could you now show us that, that, the picture that comes next? So can you imagine thousands of years ago, if you didn't know anything about astronomy and the moon went red, do you think that would be quite scary? So there are lots of stories about when eclipses happen, of ghost stories, there's some lovely ghost stories, there's some lovely, um, lots and lots of different stories around the world, because it often was very scary and people would make up stories to explain what happened. And sometimes they would make up stories to scare you, but other times they would make up stories to make you realise it was going to be all right. There were ways we, which we can overcome the challenges, like the Koreans by, by banging a drum. So there's lots of different stories about eclipses. Do have a look on the website. We've got lots of different stories for different age groups and we chose what the stories today which we thought would provide a nice spread across the age groups who might be studying eclipses around the world. Now, I'm going to finish off with just a short story and this is a, a true story. And this was told to me by Sean, who's Dr. Sheila's colleague at the RAS. Sheila, Sean told me the story, so I'd like to share it with everyone. And if you ever get a chance to go, this is a story about Christopher, Christopher Columbus. And if you go to the RAS building, when it's open again, someday soon, you can see some of the um, things that C Christopher Columbus took with him on his expeditions around the world. For you see, in 1492, Christopher Columbus sailed the ocean blue. He was um, a, a sailor, and in those days, sailors sailed all the way from Europe, all the way around the Cape of Good Hope in Africa to get to India, to pick up silks. They would make lots of money on these journeys, but these journeys would be very, very dangerous, because as they, and also very long, as they sailed around the Cape of Good Hope at the, the bottom of Africa, there would often be lots of storms. So getting from Europe, Getting from Spain, from Portugal, from England, all the way to India could be very, very dangerous, cost a lot of money, and many ships never returned. So in 1492, Christopher Columbus decided to see if he could find a safer way of getting to India. So instead of sailing east, he decided to sail west. And he thought he'd find a safer route if he sailed west across what is now called the Atlantic Ocean. So he set sail and he sailed across the Atlantic Ocean. Now, of course, what he didn't realise is that between India and Europe is a huge landmass that we now call North and South America, where hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people were living very peacefully and happily, undiscovered by anyone from Europe until Christopher Columbus came along, sadly. And he, and he landed on his first trip in 1492. He landed in, in, in the island called Cuba, and he named those group of islands the West Indies because he thought mistakenly they were part of India. And he made four trips backwards and forwards across to the West Indies. And the last one, well, the last one nearly, nearly killed him. Because you see, in 1504, he sets up, these were only small ships and they sailed. They didn't have engines in those days. So they were at the mercy of the winds. And he was sailing across the Atlantic Ocean and a great big storm whoosh, came and blew him off his path. And instead of landing in the Isle of Cuba, he landed on the island we now called Jamaica, with a great big crash, which broke his ship in two. And he was stranded on the beach, and he and all his people climbed out of the boat. And the people who lived on the island, the Arawak Indians, they came running to help them. And they took them from their boat, and they gave them food, and they gave them shelter. Which was good, because without the help of the, of the people who lived on that island, they would all have died. But Christopher Columbus and his men, well, they didn't have enough, enough things with them to mend their boat and so they stayed on the island not just for a day not just for a week not just for a month but for six months in total and of course food on the island there wasn't enough for everybody to eat and soon the food ran out and the water ran out and arguments started between Christopher Columbus sailors and the people who lived on the island who should have the food who should have the water there wasn't enough to go round and so they started to argue, and so they started to fight. Now, what would you do if you were Christopher Columbus? You haven't yet had enough time to mend your boat. You can't leave the island. But if you stay, there's not enough food for everyone. What would you do? 
If you've got an idea, maybe you could put it in the chat room. Would you negotiate? Would you try and give the people who've helped you for six months, would you try and give them something in return? What have you got on your boat that you could give them that they would want? Would you negotiate? Would you help them? Would you help them to grow the food and to, to collect the water? Would you help them to find a way to grow more food so there's food for everyone? What would you do if you were Christopher Columbus stranded on that island? What would you do? Anybody got any ideas? Put them in the chat room. What would you do with Christopher Columbus? Would you negotiate? Would you, would you give some of your armor? Because obviously you've got maybe, some, maybe your swords. Would they want fine food? Thank you, Helena. Maybe you'd go out looking for food. Help the people who live on the island to, to grow some more food or to find some more food. Maybe you could go out hunting for some animals so there's more food for everyone. Elizabeth Fantastic. has said that she would help. And help. Some of the students from Monk Seaton said um, they would barter or trade and give things in return. What could you give them in return? The Christopher Columbus looked round. Maybe you could give them swords, but what need have they got of swords? Maybe you could give them some of your armour. Maybe you could give them some of your charts so they too could go sailing. Because in those days, the sailors, they navigated by the stars. And so they had really detailed charts to follow. What could you give them? Christopher Columbus, he sat in what remained of his boat and he thought and he thought, what could I do? Maybe I could help them grow some food. Maybe I could help them hunt for food. Maybe I could give them something in return. All of these are fantastic ideas. But is that what Christopher Columbus did? No. Sad to say, Christopher Columbus played a trick on them. He was a sailor and they sailed across vast distances across the ocean, navigating by the stars. And he had really detailed charts to follow that would predict what would happen to the sky and what would happen to the weather. And he had a chart that predicted that in three nights time, there would be a lunar eclipse. In 1504, they were that good astronomers that they could predict when the next eclipse would happen. And the RAS has copies of this, don't they, Dr. Sheila, in the library, I've seen them. And so Christopher Columbus decided to play a trick on the people of the island. He said to them, if you do not give me food, God will be angry with you. And in three nights time, he will turn the sky blood red to punish you. And of course, the people on the island didn't believe him. That wouldn't happen. How could the sky turn blood red? He'd have to be a magician, somebody with special powers to do that. And he was just, just a sailor at their mercy. And so they didn't believe him. And they didn't bring him any food on the first night. And they didn't bring him any food on the second night. But on the third night, exactly as he had predicted, there was a lunar eclipse. And the sky, just like you saw there, turned blood red. <gasps> And the people on the island, they thought that Christopher Columbus was some great magician, able to talk to God and turn the sky blood red to punish them. <gasps> Terrified, they ran. They ran indoors and they got what food they could. They got what water they had left and they gave them to the silent sailors. And Christopher Columbus, he stayed in his boat for 50 minutes. He knew that was a long, as long as the calypse was going to last. He stayed in his boat, he had a little hourglass. He turned it upside down and he timed 50 minutes. He stayed while, um, while person after poor person brought him food and brought him water. Up the gangplank they came and laid it in his cabin and he stayed inside. And the sky stayed blood red until on the 50th minute of the eclipse, Christopher Columbus got up, walked out of his cabin and down the gangplank and onto the beach and said, God has forgiven you. And at that very moment, the sky, the moon turned silver once again. And the people looked up and gasped. Christopher Columbus must truly be a powerful magician, they thought. And so Christopher Columbus was saved, saved from starvation because of a trick. And that is how the island of Jamaica which is known as the land of wood and water, was discovered by European traders long ago. And that is the end of the stories for this session. Now we have a few minutes left. Have any of you any questions for Dr. Sheila? Because she is a scientist and knows lots more about eclipses than I do. Have any of you got any questions? If you can write them in the chat room, she can answer. Okay. Sheila. Uh, is there any questions that you can see that you can Not answer? Yet. They don't have to be about eclipses, they could be anything space related. If you've got any questions about astronauts or how to become um, 
a, an astronomer or how to, you know anything like that and if you're if you can't think of anything now that's absolutely fine but if you you know if we finish this session and all of a sudden you go oh i wish i'd asked that feel free to email us or get in touch with us via the eventbrite link as well we do get those emails directly so um oh we've got a question here Sheila. how big is the moon oh yeah so let's let's have a look at these questions so we've got how big is the moon uh, how many eclipses have there ever been or have you seen why don't solar eclipses happen every new moon and how many times a year are there lunar and solar eclipses well okay so um, let's have a look so th there are solar and lunar eclipses relatively regularly um, they do happen more regularly than we are able to see them um, particularly the solar eclipses because you have to be in the shadow in order to see the solar eclipse and sometimes those um, eclipses happen in the middle of the ocean or um, sort of in the Antarctic or something like that which means that you you know we can't see them um, the reason they don't happen every month is because you have to line up the sun the moon and the earth exactly in, in an exact straight line in order for these eclipses to happen and um when the moon goes around the, the earth and the earth goes around the sun we're not traveling in the exact same it's not a circle it's slightly spherical and it's slightly tilted so that alignment of the three objects doesn't happen um it doesn't happen every month but they the, the solar and lunar eclipses still do happen relatively regularly um, I can't remember exactly, but I think it's something like one every two years, might even be slightly more than that. Um, it's just depending on the size. Um, I actually haven't seen a solar eclipse. I've seen a few lunar eclipses, which I, I think are fantastic. And the thing I like about lunar eclipses is that they take quite a long time to happen. They're not instantaneous. So you sort of don't miss, you know, you don't blink and miss it. Um, in terms of solar eclipses for me i've um i've managed to miss all the ones that have happened at the right you know at the right place in the right time in my lifetime um we did a really big event in 2015 for the solar eclipse in 2015 in regent's park in london we had over a thousand people there and it was cloudy so it was a bit bit of a bit bit of a shame there um how about you cassandra have you seen any i've seen the there was a solar eclipse which year was that 2000 it was one in 2000 oh 99 and then okay. one, yeah in, in 1999 i saw it because i live in bristol i know some of you do here as well and i stood in a park in bristol and i saw that shadow going across the ground and it was really spooky it was really spooky and then the sky went dark and um and and the birds stopped singing it was just eerie oh. it's really it's, it's it, it is difficult to see you've got to be in the moon shadow and there's got to be no clouds in the sky yeah. um but it is an amazing thing to see that's why we've got the the simulations on the on the videos for you to look at and look at it please do go back and have a look at them because they show you what it's like so you know there are lists of solar eclipses and lunar eclipses online and i see um tim's posted a link so i know there's one in 2026 in spain so i think i've got my eye on that one i thought spain's not too far to travel and the um the um weather should be quite good but you do have to be mindful with solar eclipses lunar eclipses it's completely safe to look at the moon at any point in time because the light is just the reflection um of the sun's light but if you are viewing a solar eclipse make sure you do so with the proper equipment so you need solar viewers um not normal sunglasses that they're not good enough you need proper solar viewers that you can buy normally on the internet um around the time of a solar eclipse and they look like sunglasses but they've got special filters in or if you don't um look at the sun directly you can have a look at the reflection of the shadow or you can use a colander or a pinhole camera or you could set up um, a recording of the solar eclipse so you don't watch it directly okay so can you get an eclipses of venus so do you mean when i'm assuming you mean when venus travels across the face of the sun um, and yes you can they're called transits because of where the earth is the inner the two inner planets are mercury and venus and we do have transits of Mercury and Venus um, over time. These don't happen as often as solar and lunar eclipses. Um, 
There was one in 2016, I think, Mercury transit perhaps, and a Venus eclipse maybe 2009. Um, they're not actually eclipses, they don't block out the sun. What you can see, if you've got a solar telescope, is the disk of the sun and then a tiny little dot, a tiny little dot that will be crossing across the, the face of the sun and that would be the, the Mercury or the Venus transit. Now on the 17th of July, the, the RAS will be hosting a transit of the moon Ganymede crossing across the face of Jupiter. So if you're interested in having a look at a live stream of Jupiter with the, the sort of eclipse or the transit of of Ganymede, a tiny moon called Ganymede crossing across the face of Jupiter, have a look on our website. We will be putting up the information for that live stream then. And talking of further sessions, um, we haven't got any more planned with Cassandra yet, but on the 22nd of July, we do have a session with Dr. Robert Massey, who's at the RAS as well. He will be running a session about uh, ET and aliens. So the um, the Ganymede um, session is on the 17th of July, and then Robert Massey's session is on the 22nd. So have a look at those. Are there Brilliant. any questions <laughs> or comments? And again, there's all the other sessions that we've done together and lots of sessions that Sheila's done. They're all on the YouTube channel and you're welcome to look at them. And all the resources from today's are, session are on the website, www.wesharethesamemoon.org. Um, somebody said here that they saw a solar eclipse a few days ago. Christina did. Where was that solar eclipse? Uh, yes, there was one actually. Not really? in the UK. Yeah. I know I've been chatting to Christina and she's in China. So um, I think it was an annular solar eclipse. So it was, it, the, the sun wasn't completely blocked out, but it looked a bit like a ring, like a wedding ring. Um, and that was last week. So yeah, it just shows, doesn't it, that we forget that... Um, other people can see things that we can't when we're based in the UK. So that's very cool. It is, isn't it? Oh, Christina, I should have known and then I've told a Chinese story about eclipses just for you. <laughs> there are lots of stories around the world about eclipses. There are lots of stories about the moon. Um, there are hundreds and hundreds of different stories. On our website, we're collecting stories from all the communities and cultures that there are on, on this earth. So do go and have a look. I think we've got stories from about 50 different uh, communities and cultures so far. And there are lots from China. But I don't, oh, do I know any clip story from China? I'll go and look one up. <laughs> now, just to finish off, uh, have we got any more questions? Or yeah, there's a few more questions. Um, can you get trans to Mars? Yes, you can, but because where we are in relation to Mars and the Sun, we're basically in the middle of um, Mars and the Sun, so we can't see the transits of Mars. If we lived on Jupiter or Saturn or something and we were looking in towards the Sun, you would be able to see Mars crossing the face of the Sun. But because of where we are, Mars, if there's any Martians, which they're not, but if there were, Martians would be able to see a transit of the Earth crossing the sun, which would be quite fun. Uh, there's a question from Elizabeth. Are there opportunities for members of the public to visit an observatory? Yes, there are. Um, there are various different observatories depending on where you live. Um, most of them or many of them do have open days or um, you know, viewing sessions. Um, obviously at the moment they wouldn't because they're closed, but for example, there are a couple of observatories in London, near where I live there are a couple and they do um, viewing sessions, generally more often in the winter because it gets dark earlier and we're not hanging about till about 10 o'clock to have a look. So, yeah. And there's also lots of um, local astronomy groups. If yeah. you look online, there's often, and they, they will have telescopes and then they set up events so that anybody can go and have a look. Mm. And they're really keen. That's how I met uh, the Royal Astronomical Society at an event in, in, in Bristol. I met uh, Dr. Massey, yes, and um, at just an event in, Vistel, Br in Bristol. So do, do go look online where you live and see if there's a local group and then you can go along and have a look. And there's often people telling stories about what you you might see in the sky because there's lots of stories about stars and the moon and the eclipses oh lovely i've got a question dr sheila can i ask what well, somebody said here a few days ago the moon got bigger does the moon get bigger or does it just look bigger and why does it look bigger some days yeah exactly so um the, the physical moon doesn't get bigger and smaller just like the earth doesn't get smaller or bigger either but the way the moon orbits around the earth sometimes it's slightly closer to the earth uh, to the earth 
than other parts of its orbit, but only very slightly. That doesn't mean that it looks bigger from the Earth. Generally, if you see the moon and it appears to look bigger, it's something called the, the moon illusion or the moon size illusion. And it's to do with the way that light travels is reflected off the moon and then travels through our atmosphere to our eyes and it is just an illusion. So sometimes when you see the moon on the horizon, it looks huge, it looks absolutely huge, but it's just a sort of a magical optical illusion for our eyes. It's not that the, the moon's actually getting bigger. Oh, because there's lots of stories about that. I think called the super moon, isn't it? And, yeah. and I didn't understand, I kept thinking, well, there's lots of stories about the moon getting bigger, but. I don't think it does change size. Thank you for answering that question. You see, there's always so much for us to learn. Now, just to finish off, Sheila, could you show the last slide with the, oh, yes. the activity? Yeah. So those of you, because eclipses are quite hard to uh, talk about. So there's an activity that we've, we've been running, a uh, science activity. And if you go to the next uh, picture, Sheila, can you show that? There we go. So you can at home, you know, I showed you my earth and my, um, and my light and my moon. You could try that with a table lamp, but also you can make your own model, eclipse model of the sun and the moon and the earth uh, using little polystyrene, ball, polystyrene balls, uh, bits of cardboard and a uh, torch and some tinfoil. Do have a go. And that way, if you, if, you, if you close the curtains and you shine the light on, you can actually see those shadows appearing as, as, the, as the, the moon and the earth move in the sky. So if you want to have a go at that at home, please do. But thank you very much for coming today. Thank you to everybody from all over the world for coming. It's been lovely to have you. Um, thank you to the RAS for um, um, hosting the session. And as I say, there are lots of different activities and stories on the website, we share the same moon.org. And, and hopefully we may be doing some more sessions in September. <gasps> hopefully we may be back at school, we don't know. But <laughs> hopefully we'll see you again somewhere, somewhere. Thank you very much to everyone for coming. Thank you very much to Cassandra. That was an absolutely fantastic session. I really enjoyed it. Do keep an eye out for our other sessions coming up in July and August. We will be booking more things in and we're hoping to work with schools once you go back. So do mention these sessions to your teachers if you um, do go back in September. And in the meantime, have a lovely day. Have a lovely summer holiday if we don't see you before then and stay safe and stay well. Take care, everybody. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you for coming.